Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to compute three different limits. Now there's a couple ways to do these problems. I think the easiest way is to use some intuition. So for the first one, you can look at it and you can automatically tell that the answer is zero. And so I'm just going to put equal zero here and now I'll explain uh, why. So one way to figure out the answer by looking at it is to look at the degrees. So the number here, eight, is bigger than the number seven. So this piece here on the bottom grows faster than the piece on the top. So the bottom grows faster than the top, so eventually uh, it gets really, really close to zero. Another way to think about it, and this is just uh, you know loose work here, this is not really correct mathematical work, uh, is if you think about x to the seven plus six, this is important though, this builds intuition, x to the eight minus five, what you can do is think about x being really, really big. So when x is really, really big, the 6 and the 5 don't really matter. So this is approximately equal to x to the 7 over x to the 8, which is equal to 1 over x. And so now it's more clear that when x gets really, really, really big, this gets really, really close to 0. And this happens as x approaches infinity. Remember, when the bottom gets big, the fraction gets smaller. If you're ever confused by that, Always go back to basics. Think about 1 over 10, that's 0.1. And think about 1 over 100, that's 0 0.01. And think about 1 over 1,000, right? That's 0 0.001. So the bigger that the number gets on the bottom, the smaller that the fraction gets. And that's what's happening here in the original question, right? The 8 is bigger than the 7, so the bottom is getting bigger than the top at a faster rate. So this fraction is getting smaller and approaches 0. Here, the numbers are the same. You have a 7 here and a 7 here. Whenever they match, you just take the coefficient of this one, which is 1, and divide it by the coefficient of this one, which is also 1. So in this case, it's equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And that would be uh, the answer. As another simple example, let's say that I put some numbers there, just for fun. Say it's 3x to the 7th plus 6 over 2x to the 7th minus 5. In this case, it's the same, except it would be 3 over 2, right? Because you just look at the coefficients. So whenever it's bigger on the bottom, the answer is 0. Whenever the numbers match, the answer is the ratio, which means fraction, of the leading coefficients. That's what, that's what these are called, leading coefficients. This last one is probably the hardest one, and it really makes this problem uh, worthwhile. So the answer here is infinity. And I think the best way to see that is to go back to this intuitive scratch work. So check this out. So we have x to the 7 plus 6 over x to the 6 minus 5. And again, when x is really, really big, who cares about the 6 and the 5? You know, if x is like 1 billion, you have 1 billion to the 7th power plus 6. Who cares that you're adding 6? So you can just drop the numbers. It's awesome. And so this is approximately equal to that, which is equal to x. And this approaches infinity as x approaches infinity, right? Because as x approaches infinity, x approaches infinity, right? So it's the same. So the answer is infinity in this case. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some beautiful calculus. Good luck.